Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Uh, Joe Davis County teenager is missing. Police release pictures of a couple of people the girl might be with. See if you recognize the pair. They work, we eat. That phrase applies to farmers on a day set aside to recognize their impact. One local grower reflects on what makes his and other state line farms so different. And a weekend event lets people in Rockford find their groove. Organizers' main goal is to get people buying local. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. Mimi Murphy is off today. A Beloit man is charged after police say he produced child pornography. Officers arrested Misael Dominguez Adorno in Beloit following a grand jury indictment. Adorno is accused of using two minors to engage in sexually explicit conduct for the purpose of producing child pornography. These incidents allegedly happened between October of 2020 and March of 2022. Now the FBI in Milwaukee is trying to identify other potential survivors. Eyewitness News is committed to supporting survivors of sexual violence and finding solutions. We have a list of resources for anyone who may be struggling. That's over on our website, mystateline.com. Just click on that Stateline Strong tab there. Hanover, Illinois police ask for the public's help finding a missing teenager. Hanover is about 12 miles southeast of Galena. Tamula Ware was last seen Sunday morning getting into a gold or tan Chevy Impala. She's 14 years old, around 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighs about 120 pounds. Tamula has short blue hair. When she disappeared, she had on a white tank top, pink shorts, and pink tennis shoes. Investigators think she's with an unidentified man and woman. Someone spotted the car in Dubuque, Iowa, Sunday. If you have any information on where she might be, contact Hanover Police, the Joe Davis County Sheriff's Office, or Joe Davis Crime Stoppers. A longtime state line Staples demolition starts this afternoon. Crews tore down parts of Forest Hills Lodge. The Deary family sold the Rockford Speedway along with the lodge, along with the lodge after owner Jody Deary passed away last year. She was 97. The building's demolition was expected to happen in July. HJS Development bought the Speedway property. Races and events end on the 28th. State line farmers are paying very close attention to Candace's rainfall totals. Local growers have had a rough summer. They say that's even more of a reason to highlight their work on today's National Farmers Day. Drea Baroni stopped by a local farm. Drea, what did you learn? Yeah, Eric, I had the chance to chat with a local farmer about the important role he plays in the community. Uh, even though 1% of our population is farmers, 100% um, of our population eats. Dairy and grain farmer Brent Pollard has helped feed the community since 2005. He, his wife, and kids work to maintain one of the many family-owned farms here in the state line. A lot of the farm organizations in the state of Illinois have this uh, We Are the 96 campaign uh, to spotlight that 96% of the farms in Illinois are family-owned. And it's not, we're not all big, big corporations that own us, you know, it's, it's farmers that have been family members and members of the community, you know, for in my case, you know, six generations here in Winnebago County. Throughout the years, Pollard has strived to harvest food that is suitable not only for the community, but also for his family. You know, everything that I produce on this farm, my family eats too. So I don't want anything bad to happen to the food that we produce here because we eat it too. So we're, you know, the first stewards in the environment, the first people that recycle. It's really, really important to us as farmers that we are good stewards of the land. Despite a drought this year, Pollard believes many farmers were able to harvest their crops. It was a tough year, but our crops did surprisingly well for how dry it is. It's amazing what all the people behind uh, growing seed have bred or created crops that are really, really stress tolerant, and it's um, helped us out quite a bit. It, it's been very surprising for everybody, every farmer that's been out in the combine on how good things have been this year for how little rain we got. National Farmers Day aims to offer praise to the many hard workers across the nation in the midst of harvest season. Eric. Thanks, Drea. Won't be long before the weather we're worried about switches from heavy rain to snow, and the Illinois Department of Transportation is getting ahead of the next season. IDOT's holding an open house for seasonal positions. Applicants would be part of snow and ice removal across Winnebago, Boone, and Ogle counties. Anyone interested needs a commercial driver's license and to pass a criminal background check. The open house ends at 6. It's at the Rockford Maintenance Yard on 11th Street. Illinoisans pursuing a career in computers can now get training and a job from the state. It's part of the Department of Innovation and Information Technology trainee program. 
Students can get training in cybersecurity, networking, coding and database, as well as end-user computing and enterprise infrastructure. Once training is complete, graduates will be steered toward jobs in state agencies and offices. Students in the program will be paid while they complete their training. And that training salary starts at $54,000, allowing us to attract and retain excellent workers for reliable state government jobs. City Colleges of Chicago and Lincoln Land Community College in Springfield will host the training sites. Each location will start with classes of 20 participants. A local school gives students the opportunity to prepare for college and follow their faith. Rockford Christian held its annual college fair. More than 30 religion-based colleges and universities were on site. The free event gives parents and students an opportunity to meet with admissions staff and prepare for life after high school graduation. Rockford Christian's Dean of Students says this fair is all about seeing students be successful in picking their path. We are big promoters, obviously, of not only furthering education, but also Christian education. And this is a way where we can combine those two and bring to light some schools that our students may not have heard of, that are a little bit smaller maybe in name, but just as big in size and just as many opportunities. Also for some of our students who maybe don't know what type of major that they want to study, this is a good opportunity to see what types of schools offer different majors and maybe get ideas about what they might be looking at for their future. This is the 12th year Rockford Christian has hosted the College Fair. This weekend, Rockford area record stores come together to inspire the community to shop local. Mikel Delgado visited with some of the owners taking part. Mikel, for one of them, this is like a brand new start. That's right, Eric. The Rockford Record Crawl is in its ninth year. Organizers tell me the crawl allows generations to come together, discover music, and get lost in the grooves. Once a year, three record stores, Toad Hall Books and Records, CD Source, and Culture Shock come together for the record crawl. The idea is to get people to explore, to explore Rockford shops from rocking out to beats and discovering musical gems. Owners are seeing all ages get in on that fun. There's something here for everybody. Every shop has something different to offer as well. We have comic books, we have books, we have stereo equipment. You know, Culture Shock has a whole boutique. They have a lot of clothing and stuff. So each store has its own flavor. We all have our own sales. And uh, it's a great time to get out and support all three shops. You can get a punch card, and if you stop in all three stores, you have a chance to win a prize. The Rockford Record Crawl is on Saturday from 10 to 6. Eric? Thanks, Nikel. For more than a week, the U.S. House of Representatives does not have a speaker. Up next, one Republican congressman has been nominated for the job, but it's not clear whether he has enough votes to make it official on the House floor. Our temperatures this afternoon have stayed in the 50s thanks to the cloud cover and the east wind. Showers to the north this evening, but rain moves back in tomorrow. A look at how much could come down coming up in the first morn forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. Your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Congress hasn't had a Speaker of the House for nine days. Republicans nominated Louisiana Steve Scalise to be the party's new leader, but it's still not clear if he has enough votes to win the gavel. Anna Wernicke looks at the situation from the Capitol. One day after winning the expected Republican nomination for House Speaker, Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise's path to the gavel remains uncertain. We're going to continue to go through this process as we grow our support, work towards getting this resolved and getting the House back open. Scalise beat Ohio Republican Jim Jordan 113 to 99 during Wednesday's closed door vote. But he's still short of the 217 votes needed to win the speakership on the House floor. I'm not on the whip team, but I can count votes and the votes aren't there for Steve. The Republican conference met again for hours on Thursday, trying to unite the party behind Scalise. But some Republicans left the meeting saying their party isn't ready to move forward. I don't know what we accomplished uh, other than we know we have a lot of division within the conference. Texas Republican Michael McCall says an empty speaker chair is dangerous. I see a lot of threats out there. But one of the biggest threats I see is in that room because we can't unify as a conference. Republicans need to end the GOP civil war now. And House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries says Democrats are tired of waiting for Republicans to get their act together. So we can take care 
of the business of the American people. Jeffrey says without a speaker, the House can't act on any of the items on its lengthy to-do list, including a funding bill, defense bill, and aid to Israel and Ukraine. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Looks like the rain will stick with the state line for most of the weekend. Up next, we'll hear from Candace about the chance for storms tomorrow and when we'll dry out. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. We've had cloud cover for most of our Thursday afternoon, and that has kind of held our temperatures in the 50s here throughout much of the day. And we're really not going to see those numbers drop too far as we go through the night tonight. We've also held on to kind of a brisk easterly wind. We take a live look with our SkyTrack camera out in Freeport. Just about an hour or so ago, there were some lighter showers moving through the region, but a lot of that rainfall has pulled up to the north. 57 for our weather watcher down in Genoa. Terry, 53, that dew point temperature had just over eight tenths of an inch of rainfall from last night throughout the day today. Our weather watcher Sandy in the Kirkland Fairdale area just over one inch of rain there in northern DeKalb County. No farming out there today and next couple of days it'll be a little wet to get out in the fields. We'll dry things out as we get into next week. When we look at our rainfall totals this was from last night and then what we accumulated throughout the day today because there were some showers out in some spots earlier this afternoon. Anywhere you see the blue the lighter blue in the purple. Those are rainfall totals between about one and two inches. And you can see how that was kind of uh, focused and centered to the south of Rockford. You got a little further north of that and you didn't get quite as much rainfall. Most of that was under half an inch. We are going to add on to that. Not so much for this evening, but going into tomorrow, a lot of the rainfall throughout this evening going to stay focused to the north of us in Wisconsin. There may be a couple of spotty showers that remain north of Highway 20 here through this evening, but a good portion of the evening for a lot of us are going to stay dry. 55 right now in Freeport, 57 in Rockford, 58 our temperature in Rochelle. We'll maintain that easterly wind here as we go through this evening and in fact our wind is actually going to pick up a bit through tonight and then throughout the afternoon tomorrow. After about 2-3 o'clock tomorrow morning we'll see a few more spotty showers move in. And then a quick uptick in the rainfall by mid to late morning tomorrow. So after 8 or 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Getting closer to noon, some heavy rainfall coming in. And this will quickly move from west to east late morning through early afternoon. And it's within this band that we could pick up another one to maybe one and a half inches of rain. That'll move to the east, but not until after about 3 o'clock tomorrow. So we've got a pretty rainy afternoon coming up. And with that heavy rainfall, that is going to drop visibility down a bit. Bit. As low pressure moves closer to us, we're going to see a continued development of showers and thunderstorms. This will be after 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. And then rain wraps back in around that low on Saturday as our winds turn from the north and northeast. So we'll have some wind-driven rain showers going into Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. When all said and done, I think anywhere from 1 to 2 inches of rain additional are possible uh, from today throughout the afternoon, or from tonight, I should say, Friday, and then going into Saturday. Some areas could see a little more than that, maybe up to two and a half inches of rainfall. So another soaking rain coming in and where areas had a little more rainfall could be some localized flooding uh, throughout that time. There is a low end risk for a gusty thunderstorm or two southwest of Rockford. So kind of focused in from Ogle County, Lee County, DeKalb County, and then back through portions of Carroll and Whiteside County. So anyone within those regions, you may have a gusty thunderstorm or two with the second round of thunderstorms tomorrow evening. So worthwhile kind of paying attention to that forecast. So you've got rain early on and then that thunderstorm threat, or at least the stronger end of that by the evening. 54 on Saturday, same thing on Sunday. We'll eventually begin to dry things out though once we get into next week. Thank you, Candace. Reagan is in next with sports. The Chicago Bears have been bitten by the injury bug once again. She'll have the latest from Palace Hall after the break. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. The Bears were as efficient as we've seen them with seven scores in 11 possessions last week. Now with three games coming up against teams in the bottom 10 of scoring defense, Justin Fields and the offense would like to stay on that heater, but they will have to do it without quite a few guys because that injury list is hefty. Not a ton of changes from the initial report that came out yesterday, but Jalen Johnson was a full participant after being limited with his hamstring. Kyler Gordon and Cole Komet remain limited though. And the top three running 
running backs still did not practice, but the Vikings will be without their star receiver Justin Jefferson on Sunday, and that definitely changes things for the Bears. You certainly adjust your, your scheme, you know, to a great player like that, you know, and it's uh, the handful of guys in the league that you would do that for. So it allows you to play more basic, more solid on both sides as opposed to, uh, you know, tilting your coverage one way or the other. Changed a whole lot. They already lost Dalvin Cook, and he was pretty much their, their guy in the run game, and now they lose their number one target in the pass game for the last four years. With 18 out there, it's a, diff it's a different ball game. So I know they're going to come in hungry. They're going to try to establish the run, I'm sure, um, get out there and get be physical. So we gotta we got to match that and, and top that, actually. So here's a look at just part of that injury list. As I said earlier, Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson did not practice today. Lucas Patrick is out with a concussion. Eddie Jackson is limited with his foot. And the same goes for Cole Clement and his hamstring. And now look at the MLB playoffs. The Diamondbacks swept the Dodgers last night to advance to the NLCS. And tonight, the Phillies will try and clinch their spot. They are currently up 2-1 to one on their series with the Braves. First pitch is at 7 p.m. And we are less than a day away from the start of the regular season for the Rockford IceHogs. They are opening things up with a long road trip to San Jose, California. The IceHogs haven't played the Barracuda since March 31st of 2018. And that game was played here in Rockford. The Hogs have only played San San Jose four times previously and Rockford leads the series 3-1. And coming up at 6, we'll hear from some of the team on what it's like opening the season so far away. That's sports. We'll be right back. Last look at your radar, things are quieting down, at least around yeah. the immediate Rockford area. It's yeah. almost like the rain kind of is curved around us this way, for now anyway. Right, right yeah, moving up into Wisconsin. Sure. We've got actually kind of this little ridge of high pressure in the middle part of the atmosphere, so that's allowing things to kind of dry out. We did have a couple of showers in some spots. I know there was some rain earlier today, and then there were a few showers that moved through parts of the area here a couple hours ago. But some of that was pretty that, heavy. It was, yeah, it was heavy. And last night it was heavy too, and we've got another round of some pretty heavy rainfall coming up tomorrow. So so um, just kind of a heads up for that if you're going to be out and about throughout the day tomorrow, beginning mid to late morning and then lasting into the afternoon, there will be heavy rainfall and that is going to drop visibility down. And there could be some localized flooding from that between tomorrow and Saturday, another one to two inches of rain coming up. Temperatures in the 50s for the weekend. Thanks, Candace. Mm -hmm. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.